Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, we explore the basics on one of the less formidable members of the Ceratopsians. It's the Mongolian enigma that is... Protoceratops. The story of Protoceratops' discovery must first begin with one of its discoverers, American paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne. Osborne in the early 1900s would propose a theory that most animals, including humans, could trace their origins to Central Asia, particularly areas of Southern Russia, much of Mongolia, and areas of Northern China. The American Museum of Natural History took interest in this theory and would sponsor three expeditions to the region between 1916 and 1930, led by Osborne and fellow American paleontologist Roy Chapman Andrews. The team was organized to look for and recover the remains of human ancestors, and to be quite frank, they sucked at it. But they did get a lot of cool dinosaur bones! Various dinosaurs like the Oviraptor, Sauronithoides, and the famed Velociraptor all owed their discovery to these expeditions. But one of the most striking fossils for Osborne would be a fractured juvenile skull discovered by photographer James B. Shackleford in 1922. This skull would later become the holotype specimen for this new dinosaur, named the Protoceratops andrusi. Over the following years, our understanding of this creature would continue to increase exponentially, as over 100 unique specimens would be uncovered throughout Mongolia and northern China, informing a number of new descriptions for the creature to be written. Important to note, however, is that some of these conclusions would not be so conclusive. So for the rest of this piece on the history of Protoceratops, let's clear up some of these misunderstandings. One such example being the first ever dinosaur egg being attributed to this taxon. In one of these Mongolian expeditions, specifically a 1923 expedition to the Flaming Cliffs, the first ever evidence of a dinosaur nest was uncovered, alongside the skeleton of another dinosaur, later classified as the Oviraptor. Due to the abundance of Protoceratops fossils in the area, paleontologists would assign these eggs to the genus, and the nearby theropod was believed to be a thief, raiding the nest for food, helping to name this creature as the Oviraptor, or Egg Thief. This assumption would persist until 1994, when the discovery of another nest with preserved fossilized embryos helped prove that this original nest actually belonged to that same oviraptor, and rather than raiding the nest for food, it was merely a parent brooding over its young. Which is really messed up if you look at it from the oviraptor's point of view. Like, imagine you take one of those cheesy pictures of you tossing your kid into the air for fun, and 50 million years later, some descendants of, like, squirrels just declare, oh yeah, we call this species the child chucker, because it just threw around other animals' babies. <clears throat> Anyways, another misconception of Protoceratops revolves around where this creature existed in the lineage of dinosaurs. Specifically, their relation to the Ceratopsidae, a family of Ceratopsians that hold many of the large horned dinosaurs you probably think of when hearing Ceratops, like the Triceratops or Ceracosaurus. Now, like any discussion on taxonomy, this will get very messy and very confusing very quickly. And since basic is in the name of the show, here's a simple breakdown with a little visual aid. The earliest description of Protoceratops would declare this creature a member of the newly created Protoceratopsidae family, described for their primitive features in relation to many Ceratopsidae family members. Due to this, it was believed Protoceratops was a precursor to the rest of the Ceratopsidae family, a fairly reasonable conclusion, as paleontologists believe the small frill and underdeveloped horns would naturally lead into larger frills and the emergence of more pronounced horns. 
Some authors took this primitive belief a step further, believing protoceratops may have also had some relation and serve as a link to the ankylosaurian grouping. But this theory did not last long. As for the Ceratopsidae, it wouldn't be until 2010 that this conclusion would be extensively challenged, where it was determined that the Ceratopsidae had origins that dated farther back than Protoceratops, leading to the current taxon of Ceratopsians, leading into the Protoceratopsidae and Ceratopsidae existing as distinct families of the same grouping. Cool? Cool. Let's get back to just Protoceratops, shall we? The name Protoceratops has its roots in Greek, including proto for first, sera for horn, and tops for face, translating to first horned face. While not mentioned in the original description, this name was meant to reference its early interpretation as one of the earliest ancestors of the Ceratopsids. The genus has been divided into two distinct species, those being Andrusi and Hellenicorhinus. The first of the two, Andrusi, was the original species to be discovered in the early 1900s and was named in honor of paleontologist Roy Chapman Andrews, the paleontologist tasked with leading many of these original Gobi Desert expeditions. The second species, Hellenicorhinus, would not be declared until 2001, first described by paleontologist Oliver Lambert and his colleagues. This name also stems from Greek and translates to Hellenikos for, well, Greek, and Rhys for nose, translating to Greek nose. This peculiar translation was meant to describe one of its most obvious features, Specifically, it's broad and angular snout, similar to the straight profiles of Greek sculptures. The two species are fairly similar overall, with the largest difference between the two being Hellenicorhinus being slightly larger and having its small nasal horn divided into two pointed ridges, opposed to the singular horn of Andrusi. As previously mentioned, Protoceratops is the namesake of its own family, the Protoceratopsidae, which further belong to the Ceratopsian grouping of dinosaurs. Among its family, Protoceratops is one of the largest members, but was fairly small in comparison to many of its Ceratopsian brethren. It would have measured approximately 6 feet, or 2 meters in length, and stood only about 3 feet, or a meter in height. At this size, it most likely would have weighed about 400 pounds, a far cry from the nearly 10-ton Triceratops. Despite their significant size difference, the overall body structure between the two were quite similar. Both were quadrupedal, walking on all fours, with strong hind limbs and counterbalanced by a fairly short tail. The largest difference between the two comes from that iconic Ceratopsian skull. Protoceratops' skull was fairly large in relation to the rest of its body, lined by a shield-like frill that measured approximately a foot and a half, or 60 centimeters in length. Like many of its grouping, it is likely this frill served a dual purpose, of being a physical barrier between its neck and would-be predators, as well as being a tool for display to impress mates and ward off threats. The horniness of Protoceratops, I'm gonna have to rewrite that, all right. <clears throat> the horns of Protoceratops were significantly less defined than many of its fellow Ceratopsians. Rather than a prominent spike like horn, Protoceratops sported a much smaller, shorter structure just above their nostrils, which likely would have been used for defense as well as a useful tool when digging and foraging for food. Just below this horn was its large jaws, often compared to a parrot's beak, due to its curved appearance and sharp tip. Behind this beak were rows of small yet powerful teeth, necessary to grind the tough vegetation this creature would feast on. Important to note 
Many artists choose to illustrate Protoceratops with quill-like feathers towards the back of its body and just along its tail. There is actually no direct evidence for this. Instead, it has been heavily theorized, based off of another Ceratopsian, the Cetacosaurus, sporting these structures in the same area. Protoceratops would have lived during the late Cretaceous, nearly 70 million years ago. It would have lived throughout Central Asia, particularly in regions that now make up modern Mongolia and northern China. The environment during this time was most likely a semi-arid one, littered with short-lived rivers and lakes, and vast expanses of sandy dunes. It likely would have lived alongside the small ankylosaur, Pinacosaurus, while contending with predators, including the massive Tarbosaurus and the conniving Velociraptor. Protoceratops likely would have lived in small herds or colonies for protection of themselves and their young when nesting. Fossils indicate these groups would vary in size, age distribution, and gender makeup. Paleontologists, particularly the works of Nick Longrich, theorized Protoceratops was a largely nocturnal animal due to their unusually large eyes, lending themselves well to strong night vision. Longrich believed Protoceratops would graze throughout the night and dig shallow burrows with their hind limbs to shade themselves from the beaming desert sun during the day. But some believe Protoceratops more likely lived a cathemeral lifestyle or active sporadically throughout the day and night. Despite its lesser stature, Protoceratops has still been able to carve its own place into popular culture today. While not directly tied to our modern media, one of the most famous and renowned fossils in paleontology actually includes Protoceratops, that being the fighting dinosaur specimen. This 1971 fossil preserves a Protoceratops and Velociraptor locked in combat, the most well-preserved example of predation among dinosaurs. Exactly how such a fossil could be preserved has been a hotly debated topic, with one of the most likely scenarios being the pair drowned in a collapsing sand dune. As for actual media appearances, the list is quite extensive. To name just a few would include 2002's documentary Chased by Dinosaurs, 2003's documentary Dinosaur Planet, 2007 documentary My Pet Dinosaur, 2008 film Tarbosaurus the Mightiest Ever, 2011 documentary Dinosaur Revolution, 2022 video game Prehistoric Kingdom, and of course the recurring character BJ in Barney and Friends. BJ is, of course, the older brother of Baby Bop, whom he frequently calls Sissy and occasionally calls by her name. He sings BJ's song about himself. He lost his hat in... Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm just reading straight from the Wikipedia at this point. I don't make these videos as an excuse to watch the Emmy award-winning show Barney. That Emmy thing isn't a joke, by the way. The Protoceratops can easily be overshadowed by its larger and more eye-catching brethren. But this does not mean Protoceratops is any less fascinating as an individual. The perfect mix of cuteness and strength makes this creature a truly memorable dinosaur in the grand pantheon of Mesozoic creatures. I suggest you strive to respect this little dino more. Proto. That's good do for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Protoceratops if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. For those unaware, this is actually the second Dino Basics episode on Protoceratops, the first being the second ever video on the channel. I wasn't really happy with that original upload, so consider this a much needed update on that original. Anyways, next time we'll be exploring a possibly not so distant dinosaur from today, as we explore the legend of the African Makole Mbembe. Thank you for your support and see you in the next video.